So uh, we can go through introductions of everyone here who's playing. Uh, I'll go ahead and go first. I am uh, Kenneth. I run the podcast SCP Play. Uh, we run a uh, tabletop RPG called Monster of the Week, and uh, we do an actual play podcast that's themed in the SCP universe. So uh, that's sort of how I got in contact with Eric through that, and then uh, by extension, contact with everyone playing here today. Uh, so let's go ahead and start from top of the list. Alpha Lance, aka Kyle, would you like to introduce yourself? No, thanks. No. Okay. Uh, moving on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I am uh, Kyle or Alpha Lance. Um, either or is fine by me. I use he, him. Uh, I am uh, Toad King's brother, younger brother, but taller. Uh, I voice <laughs> DJ Skip on our podcast, Foundation After Midnight Radio. Um, he was the one who initially just was like, hey, check out this like cool thing and like read up on it. And we just... Uh, explored into that uh, Toad King really dived into it and has uh, brought me along on this awesome adventure and getting to meet cooler and cooler people and uh, getting to still cool do cool projects like this and then being the uh, n not not newer greener foundation member uh, to his expert level uh, so I'm super excited to be here I do uh, voice acting in D and D, and to get to bring that into the Foundation universe is very exciting. So happy to be here. Um, I'm Anna or Rad. Um, she, her. Uh, I am an operational staff member on the wiki. Um, and I write some stuff on there. And I'm the writer and director of the podcast Find Us Alive, which is a narrative audio fiction thing that we've been working on for a while. Um, so. Yeah, I'm also very excited to be here. I love tabletop games, so hooray. Could could you say that with yeah. more enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> no, you, you're okay. No need to be nervous. Yeah, I actually am really excited. I'm yeah. No, we've been, yeah, we've both <laughs> been talking about this. Uh, my name is Tosh. Hi, uh, or Tosh draws is my handle everywhere. She, her, and um. <clears throat> I actually am on the, um, I think the primary SCP thing I'm involved with would be part of that same podcast that Anna writes and directs, Find Us Alive, um, and I voice Dr. Klein on there. And I also have provided like some voices in different SCP-related shorts and games and things in development right now. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just like floating around in different pieces of media but i really just love that stuff um and i'm a big tabletop fan as well i'm uh i'm also on the cosmo tabletop podcast is the other thing that i do so uh yeah really excited to uh check out this the the infinite ikea was always one of my favorites to begin with so being able to play in it is going to be really fun hey everybody i am sherman uh username the sherm Dr. O.C., Dr. Theron Sherman, he, him, and I run the Site42 YouTube channel and TikToks, which are focused on both bringing new people into the SCP community and introducing them to the concepts, as well as showcasing, I say lesser known SCPs, but it's just the SCPs that aren't your run-of-the-mill 682049 that the general public already knows about from the memes. I do all sorts of voice acting and acting and directing and producing whatever I can get my hands on. I love tabletop gaming and am very freaking excited to bring my wacky, wacky character to this uh, game with you guys. So we did um, one shot or uh, 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 sessions with each of you individually. This is a one shot. Um, so each of your characters, it, uh, we left off where you were in the infinite Ikea and we're headed towards a flare that just got shot into the air. Uh, I have a short uh, intro here that I will get through and then we'll get you into the situation and you can each describe your characters. 
SCP-3008, more commonly known as the Infinite Ikea, appears to be a normal Ikea from the exterior, shining in its capitalistic splendor. However, as the name suggests, the interior is infinite, at least as far as the SCP Foundation or the trapped denizens of the store are able to tell. Additionally, the regular staff has been replaced with faceless, dispro disproportionate humanoids. They all still wear the uh, typical yellow and blue uh, striped garb of IKEA employees, but they are faceless uh, and seem to be entirely consistent of just some skin-like material that continues all the way through the body. There's no bones. These entities, uh, while terrifying, are mostly docile during the daytime in the store and while the lights are on, uh, but when nighttime comes around and the lights are turned off, they become hostile. Within the store, uh, chaos and conflict commonly plague the tribespeople of the interior. As they clash over uh, control of the territories and struggle to survive off of vending machines and meatballs, um, they are constantly met with uh, resistance. The situation we find on this occasion is no exception due to uh, the rule of chaos within the infinite Ikea. We see a flare that is rising and burning brightly in the night or unlit sky. Um, we also see the disfigured, grotesque, uh, blank, empty, non-existent faces of some of these employees that are in the surrounding area um, peer from behind shelves and peer and uh, sh from goodness peer from behind shelves and pillars to begin moving in this direction. The pillow pilferers, a tribe that has long been in conflict with the canopy tribe, fired this flare into the air while standing safely atop some shelves in the area. Their goal was to attract the abominations to this area and destroy the canopy tribe, uh, who had foolishly gone out at night and were uh, on the ground below the shelves currently. Uh, as the pillow, pilfer pillow pilferers, sorry, that's a tongue twister, uh, gaze upward with smiling faces uh, at the flare that they have just shot up, uh, that is burning into the air. Uh, they then gaze back downward and see that the Canopy Tribe members that they had seemingly just brought demise upon are no longer there. They've just completely disappeared without a trace. The Pillow Pilferers frantically look around as they realize that the force that they had just attracted to this area now would be focused on them. Some distance away from these events, uh, four people who had been weaving between shelves uh, to head towards this flare, either fleeing from uh, some danger, uh, seeking to provide some assistance to the people who might be in trouble, or just wandering in search of meatballs. Um, they are all heading in this direction, and they all enter a uh, clearing where there's a display of uh, like a, a living room out in the open. It looks very nice, but uh, you're all more focused on uh, each of these new people that has stepped out into this clearing. The first person who's stepping out into this spot is the last remaining member of the Canopy Tribe, uh, who is determined to grasp at a chance at redemption through heroically saving the rest of his tribe from this danger. Stanley, would you describe yourself? Sure. So I am playing Stanley, a character that I, uh, if any of you have seen uh, Confinement, might recognize uh, from the Lord Bung series. I happen to voice him, and I'm very happy to reprise the role in this situation. Uh, Stanley is pretty average looking. Aside from the uh, IKEA Canopy Tribe tattoos he has on himself, printed in a light blue ink looking akin to instructions across his body arrows and uh and lines uh tracing across him as marks of his uh now 
gone tribe. The last remaining member, Stanley, carries around with him the piece of equipment that got him his name, which is a Stanley knife, a box cutter-like blade that he has roped onto a long spear uh, to turn into either a, a short dagger or a uh, tool of some kind. Uh, still functioning and has worked for him uh, as much as it was a first seen as a uh, a scar and later became his tool of choice. He has uh, survived inside of the infinite Ikea for an unknown amount of times, just so long that he hardly remembers the life he had before, but also wasn't much of a life to really remember anyways. Okay, so he is the first that steps out into uh, this clearing. The second is a clown who is in search of a savory destiny. Sherm, would you like to describe Cletus to us? Into the clearing walks a thin, curmudgeonly clown. If you want a visual <laughs> reference in your mind, imagine Old Man McGucket from Gravity Falls in yellow and black striped clown apparel, fully painted face, and the wildest, angriest eyes. His pants are far too baggy, and you can see that they contain things that should not go in your pants. <laughs> And he walks hunched over, carrying a, what I believe is currently a frying pan in one hand, and a baton twirler's baton in the other. And he is wheezing, because he did not expect to have running in this adventure. <laughs> he left his bike at the entrance. Very unfortunate. Yeah, rookie mistake. <laughs> uh the third who steps into this clearing is a Foundation employee that has been tasked with the recovery of lost assets. Tosh, would you please describe Martha for us? Martha is like, okay, she's like six foot, I think. She, yeah, she's just this very bookish, lanky looking woman, uh, huge mess of uh, reddish brown hair and these big old glasses. Uh, the image I really like that kind of conveys the vibe is uh, Dr. Uh, Octavius, like Liv Octavius from Spider-Verse. Though she is currently carrying a very bloody axe, I think? I can't remember. Is that? <laughs> that's about where we left off. <laughs> did we? Hold on. Did you just murder someone? Did, did, did you have a session with someone else? <laughs> no, I... Hold on. <laughs> uh, where, did, where did we leave you off? <laughs> okay, wait. Do the weird ikea employees they don't bleed do they no they do not okay so it's not i was gonna say did you kill bloody, someone it's not bloody <laughs> but it is menacing i guess uh, so it's very at odds with her bookish appearance and everything like she really looks like the most uh run-of-the-mill like receptionist lady you would expect to uh encounter so yeah <laughs> that is uh yeah, I, was Martha. Gonna, I was gonna say it might have uh like recognizable chunks of or, or, like, torn material of mm -hmm. a, an a, Ikea employee shirt. Yeah, we'll go with that, then. Yeah. Uh, covered in Ikea chunks, TM. Had me scared for a second there. I thought you could have <laughs> accidentally had a, an anomalous session with someone else where you just went on a rampage oh, that I didn't know about. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then our fourth and final one, who... Um, they don't step into the clearing, so she drives in... It's a very determined suburban mother that is driving <laughs> a Honda Odyssey through the store. <laughs> so, um, Anna, would you describe Karen for us, please? Um, so, just to be very specific, it is a matte black Honda Odyssey. Um, Sorry, I'll put that in my notes. It's been, <laughs> it's been, it's been rattle canned. Um, and if you look at it from the outside, you can see the various pointed things that are just stacked up in the back of it, but very in a very organized way. And um, sitting in the front seat is a early middle-aged white woman with long blondish hair that was probably curled at one point and is no longer. <laughs> um, she looks a little bit like her smile has been stuck to her face with butterfly pins, and she's wearing a striped black and white blouse I did not know about Sherm's color scheme, but apparently we have the same one. Um, <laughs> and she steps out of her car uh, holding a harpoon gun. Okay. Um, so the situation is you all were heading towards the flare, and you're now all here. 
So go for it. Are we like just standing in the same clearing, the exact same space, yeah. like facing each Four-way other? Four-way intersection. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, can I roll to read a bad situation? <laughs> uh, sure. I want to know how... Did we see those people disappear? Uh, no. So you're not quite up to this yet. You're some distance away, probably like a hundred or so feet away. Okay, well, I rolled a two, so that's... Four meters. <laughs> that that meters reflects... Away. Uh, total? Lack of knowledge on that. <laughs> uh, no, two plus one, so three. Okay. So on read a bad situation, your total is uh, less than seven. So that is a complete failure. On a miss, you misread the situation. You might reveal tactical details to your enemies. Um, okay. Um, then I'm going to I'm going to retcon. She doesn't get out of the car. Um, because she doesn't realize that it would be dangerous to be heard in the car, so she keeps driving. <laughs> she just keeps going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're just gonna keep on heading forward. Um, and as the vehicle keeps rumbling forward, the the other three people are sort of left there. Just uh, do any of us have to jump I... out of the way? <laughs> no, she's. Uh, I don't think you're not flooring it, are you? No, she's like inching okay. forward. Um. Can I okay. see them? Yes, I think you rolled up your windows <laughs> as soon as you saw them. <laughs> and locked the door. Um, <laughs> yes. Very as, who's, as who's Karen the, do. <laughs> who's, the, who's the closest person to me? Um, probably the clown. Um, okay, not him. Who's the next closest person to me? <laughs> uh, the foundation lady who looks like a receptionist type demeanor, I guess. I don't okay, think yeah, Karen would want to things. talk to the uh, the person with face tattoos, so. <laughs> Probably not, no. Um, so I'm going to drive closer to her, uh, and I'm going to roll my window down and wave. Hi, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Ah, uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Karen. Um, did you it is. fire um... off that flare just now? Was that you? No, I'm afraid that wasn't me. I was, uh... I'm, I'm here to find out, too, I guess. Okay, okay. Um, I can clear out some space in my front seat if you would like a ride. I can use as many people on my team as I possibly can get. I ignore the clown. Okay. <laughs> See, now the clown, uh... <laughs> though, is not ignoring you. <laughs> Because you just said out loud that your name is Karen. Uh, do I need to take my volume down? I'm hearing it. Probably a little bit. Yeah, yeah. your mic's let's like take that. peaking. Uh, it's like blown out a little bit. All right, mm -hmm. let's try this again. Let's take it down a bit, bit. How we sound and how we sound and are we feeling pretty good yet? Uh, do your normal enthusiasm. Well, this clown here is about to come <laughs> yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, still, still further down. Oh, still further down. <laughs> so much further down. <laughs> Redlining the shit out of it. Uh, look at your audio and like look what the waveform looks like. It's probably blowout. It, it sounds. So, it sounds like blowout. Yeah. My my audition is reading that I am after having turned it down between neg twenty one and neg twenty seven. Oh, okay. I think huh. you guys are just catching a weird Discord setting. Okay, I will turn uh, you down. On Discord a little bit, but yeah. uh, it, it'll it still probably sound that way. But you're probably fine, if it looks good on your end. All right, get ready for a lot of loud clown talking while I calibrate. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I've heard about oh these Karens. God. These Karens this... are mighty powerful creatures. This sounds I like when they blow out name. the video clip on purpose, and it's just like, <laughs> like, just constantly. <laughs> yep. If, if 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 any of the levels are still an issue in the post recording, can we just like say that this clown is anomalous and his vocal cords just do that? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> he just sounds like that. In case you're not familiar with the circus of the disquieting, clowns are yeah. not human; they are eldritch beings. Oh hell yeah! Be better than <laughs> even. <laughs> All right. So shall I pick up from where I left off? Yes, you were determined to not allow them to uh, get away with calling themselves Karen. No, no, Karen may want to ignore the clown, but the clown is not ignoring Karen. Because <laughs> even though most of the time your circus is quieting, your anomalous communities are going to 
you know, look down on the humdrums, the normal people. I've heard about Karens, and I know that if I want to find them meatballs, I need someone like that Karen on my side, especially because while it's not a clown car, it is much better than hoofing it on foot. Yeah, that is an excellent deduction. <laughs> Karen can will do everything in her power if you're able to convince her to help you find those yeah. meatballs. Well, and so in the meantime, Martha is standing there looking very much in fight or flight response, despite just talking to a woman in a car. Um, it's <laughs> oh, honey, you you look like you're going to cry. Are you all right? I, I'm completely fine ma'am i just uh you know it's it's a bit weird uh having such uh fear in my being when i'm the one holding an axe uh right uh well um see i'm sort of looking for people who have a bit more uh what do you call it um vicious energy uh because i'm on a mission and i really need to accomplish it so if you well, if you I... don't think that you can be up to the challenge then maybe i can just move on yeah well i mean there is this clown that's looking very determined now he's marching over oh god ah uh... allow me to introduce myself my name is cletus t tillowicker and i heard that you're on a mission right, i'm backing away and slowly I am also uh... on a mission a mission to take a bath hopefully or meatballs Oh, okay. Um, Did you say you I... need gasoline? Oh, no, I've just been cutting up the employees for that. Hmm, they are made of petroleum. That's scientifically viable. I'm backing away yeah. a little faster now, okay? Uh... Listen here. Are you, are you planning on doing anything with that axe, out of curiosity? Uh, yeah. Keep it? I mean, I mean, what are you, do what are you doing? What are you doing with it? Can, you know, it's a, can you kill things? I, That's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a pretty versatile uh, tool. You can do it for you know, use it for a lot of things, but uh, chopping bodies is one of those. Listen, I kind of need to get the, <laughs> there's like a there's a thing that I uh, the flare is uh, like it almost completely fallen to the ground now. Um, damn it! And off in the distance, you do see a few employees moving your way. Okay. Uh, you two both might want to get in. Um, there's no room in the back. You'll have to push aside the uh, kids' uh, car seats. Um, but that shouldn't be a oh, problem for me, you, seeing fit. as... Yeah, ah. that's kind of what I thought. I, and I, po I pop open the um, passenger door. Uh, who's... Who's beep, who's uh, Blondie beep, over there? Beep. It's the beeping of the door opening. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the freaking the sliding! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it makes a really horrible grinding noise. <laughs> you watch as the clown, who's been walking around angrily with a Scrooge McDuck posture this entire time, walks over to the trunk, which is now opened, leaps in while squiggling his limbs in a very 1920s cartoon way to fit in between whatever objects are in the trunk. Poison. All right, that might as well happen. <laughs> All right. So has uh, has Stanley just sort of continued running forward urgently, or is he here? Socially awkward Stanley has just been watching this unfold this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Martha walks around to the back and like just closes the trunk, I guess, and then looks over to Stanley. So uh, what's your shtick? Oh, uh, I, um, hi, I'm Stanley, uh, hi, I'm Martha. do you, uh, hi, uh, hi, um, do you, what tribe do you hail from? Tri tribe, ah, uh, uh, um, Ravenclaw? What, what's the question? <laughs> I, I, where, where are you located? By the appliances, by... The cafeteria. Oh no! I just, I just got here. Oh, you're, uh, new. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm not usually the one for introductions. Um. I mean, neither am I. Uh, it's kind of yeah. Uh. Yeah. Do you want? Do you want? 
I slap the side um, of the van out the window. Just... Hi, uh, we have places to be, so if everyone could wrap this up, right. that would be great. Do you want to just, do you wanna just uh, get in? Ma'am, are you heading towards where the light was? Uh, yes, on my quest to kill the manager. Do oh. you want to help us? I I was a, a distinguished warrior in my tribe. I, I could help if you could lead me there. Can you fit in a child's booster seat? I have a small frame, yes. I do have my axe if needed. Fantastic. Climb on in. Don't forget to buckle your seatbelts, please. All right. Uh, and what, what tribe are, are you? Karen, you said? Yes, Karen Berlintanchen. I don't know the Berlintanchen tribe. Sorry, that's, uh, that's my husband's last name. I spent some time in kitchenware, but unfortunately they were not able to help me beyond what they could offer, so I have gone on my own. The store is now closed. We need ah, to exit yeah, the building. Uh, you know, let's just get we in. need to get the cover okay. fast. Get in the car, everyone okay. get in the car, please. Uh, oh, 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 it's been a long time since I've seen one of these. <laughs> um, okay, so... It ain't so we... that hard, buddy, just climb in the door. <laughs> Oh. So we got the <laughs> clown who's crammed himself in the bag. There's like the middle mm -hmm. area. You said there's like the kids' booster seats. There's like what? There's like yeah. There's like there's like a booster seat and like a toddler seat in the two like middle okay car seats. And then there's the shotgun seat next to Karen. Yes. And the whole inside of the car is just covered in weapons. Just got like fuck tons of weapons. <laughs> oh shit! I'll, I'll take the uh, cot seat. I, I, you know what? I'm I, Martha's six foot. I'm not sure how she's gonna fit. This is gonna be great. Uh, Five foot six. Stanley takes the smallest seat. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to buckle, please. Okay. I don't want anyone getting. Oh god. Okay. There's uh, an employee that's about. 10 feet tall, approaching your way, I'm, about 20 feet away. I'm hitting, I'm, coming is from everyone the side, buckled? I'm, I'm hitting the button. It's not okay, closing. Okay. It's not doing the beep thing. It's not doing the... Karen? Beep, Karen? Beep, uh, beep, I floor it. <laughs> is, the, is, is the creepy guy going with us? We've got some squishies coming. Can we get this yes, show on I, the road? Yes, I, I floor it toward the employee. Okay. Uh, so the employee is coming from the side. You floor it to go forward to head towards the flare. Oh, it's coming from the side? Then, yeah, yeah. then, yeah, I do that. But if it starts chasing me, I'm gonna throw it in reverse. <laughs> Sorry, is it coming okay. at the side with like that we're entering, or from a different side? The, it's coming from the side that the door is closing on. Okay, yeah. If if it is too close, I would like to make an attack against it just to try to keep uh, it away from getting in. Okay, it's not quite there yet, but if she Good. decides okay. to reverse while the door is still open, you might. Get no, the I'm waiting until everyone's buckled. Uh, okay, no one's buckled. <laughs> Did you floor it? No, I'm waiting until everyone's buckled. I, right, everyone hurry up. I buckle my seatbelt. I'm, bu I'm buckled. I, I, I bucket the seatbelt, buckle the seatbelt without actually being in the seatbelt. I just, she hears the click. <laughs> Mr. Clown, do you have a seatbelt? It's 10 I, feet away. I am Wait. perfectly nestled in all of these objects. I, we need, you need to have we a seatbelt that is required to, in oh this my vehicle. God. Stanley, it's in reach. I want a rope. I've got a rope in my pants. I've tied I... myself to this seat. Drive, woman! I step on it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I go for an attack, but then the car lurches. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it lurches forward. Uh, you... I try to attack from a booster seat, but the car is now moving. <laughs> <laughs> you launch off going forward. Uh, you're now heading straight to where the flare has uh, completely fallen to the ground. You see in front of you uh, several of the abomination employees are surrounding some shelves and trying to bring it down and you can see up top there are a bunch of pillowed people would you like to try to assist them or are you hightailing it fuck them um stanley does not say this out loud <laughs> <laughs> i don't i what hmm, i don't know what role this would be uh would it be a under... bad situation? So, uh, if how, you want how to many employees do something, um, we'll say that, like, on the side that you're on that you can see, there's, like, three that are trying to, like, uh, uh, go after one of the support struts of this uh, shelving unit. How big are they? Um, one of them is real small, one of them is about normal human size, and one of them is about normal human size, but has a grotesque enlarged arm. Um, I like to 
act under pressure to e-brake drift my car into them. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any bonuses for driving at all? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that was on the sheet. Is or at least uh, our driving sheet. stat? I don't remember there being. One. There's one of the classes that gets some bonus driving stuff. I can't. I remember. don't think that was mine. Does Karen's soccer mom experience oh. give her the equivalent stat in that though? Yeah, I don't think you did. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh right, they're homebrew ones. Yeah, and you didn't add that. Because one. I'm That's pretty right. sure there is one for the. Because there's one for yeah, one yeah. of the other classes. Um, if you can think of anything that you have in the vehicle that either you or someone else could use, you do have what I need when I need it. You are able to store objects uh, and be able to get them as long as you have access to your cash. If you can think of anything that you would mm. have that might be helpful here, I'll give you one forward to this situation. Hmm. Well, Karen, did your kids have like that movie they would like watch over and over the second it ended? You put is, on repeat, is... and was it Tokyo? Or was it Drift? Speed Racer two thousand eight? Is that playing on loop? It was Speed Racer two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I harnessed the power of Speed Racer two thousand eight. <laughs> okay, that that works. I'll give it to you. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, plus, why am I? I'm blinking on. Plus uh, cool. Plus cool. Yeah. Uh, which unfortunately for me is negative one, but we'll see how this goes. This is fine. <laughs> Karen's not I cool rolled a one. nine plus one or minus one. It's just eight. And then plus one. So you're at nine. If someone wants to help out, mm. uh, also rolling plus cool, uh, you may. I can do that. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what specifically I would be doing physically <laughs> to help, but, uh, I'm. I uh, have If you're a able plan. to like hang out the window and do something maybe, or. Sherm, did you have something? I have a plan. I'm going to increase the morale of the driver by humming the Speed Racer soon theme song with a country <laughs> twang to get her in the mood oh for racing. God. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> sure. I'm I am okay rolling. That. I am rolling two Ds. I have a negative one to cool. But I still rolled a ten. So this is a... Uh, this is a nine. And, er, okay. And it also has a... Uh, I have a plus two to my helping rolls rather than a plus one due to my helping hand ability. Oh, okay. So is it the total is nine or 11? Nine, nine is the roll, and then they get a plus two is, rather than oh, a plus one okay. for the win. Gotcha. Uh, so they, then their roll is changed to an 11, but uh, 10 is the same. So uh, if they had rolled an eight, then you would have been able to push it to a 10. But either way, you help them out. Uh, you, Since you have a mixed success, you uh, put yourself in the line of danger. I think that um, you start... Uh, were you saying whistling or humming? I was going to hum it. I was going to be like... <laughs> Sounds like a banjo. As you start doing it, you get the sense deep down in your clowny heart that it's not doing enough, so you stick your head out the window and start doing the same and as she begins to drift uh she is inspired and able to uh do this sweeping tokyo drift move perfectly uh but cletus takes a tumble out the window upon <laughs> this happening oh, and oh. you're uh, outside the car but the three employees who had been attacking the support struts there uh are prevented from doing so bow 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 bow, bow! <laughs> Oh, oh, over Discord. <laughs> I, I won't. I do. It still sounds just completely blown out and nothing else. <laughs> like, um, but it is very can... funny from our end. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> uh, when we take our break, we can listen back and see if uh, it wound up being awful or not. Uh, test this out. Test this out. Is this sounding better? Is this sounding better? Mm -hmm. It's very quiet, but it sounds like you're a lot farther away. Uh, yeah, better because you're not doing yelling. Voices, Let me. But... I I've taken my Discord input down to ninety. I'm gonna see if this makes a difference. Let me. Let me do the thing one more time. Prepare your ear okay. holes. Bow 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 bow, bow 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> your top volume stuff is still blowing out, but that was better. So that was better, <laughs> I think. Yeah. The the first six bow -ba bows were good. But... I give it i <laughs> give I give it six out of seven bow -ba bows. It is an improvement. I see some I see some ADR in my future. I'm I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh so 
at this point, you have uh, swept those employees out of the way. And uh, as you do so, uh, you also like knock a box uh, that slips underneath the structure and is able to continue supporting it. So uh, the section that is directly beneath the support strut is uh, at least safe. Um, if you look at the IKEA employees you hit, since I, I imagine this Honda Odyssey was going pretty quick. Uh, sorry, Matt Black Honda Odyssey, and they're 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 splatted. Uh, so you you don't have anything to worry about there. Uh, but as you uh, as Cletus recovers, uh, like does a like big old head shake, and there's a comical sound of like rattling going on as he <laughs> looks around. Uh, there are some more employees that. Uh, have seen that you have come over to here and are shifting in your direction. Um, and as they are heading towards you, they get closer and closer, but then the lights turn on. And just as quickly as they turn hostile in the night, they turn docile in the day. Congratulations, you have stopped the pillow pilferers from meeting their untimely demise, and the Employees no longer tell you that the store is closed and slowly begin wandering off to stock some shelves. Are any of them dead? Uh, the three that were hit with the Honda Odyssey are completely flattened, yes. I'm going to wait oh. until the other ones meander away, uh, and then I'm going to hop out and I'm going to cut off their legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, they're actually supposed to try to collect the fallen bodies. Um, so instead of uh, heading for you, they start walking over to the crumpled mess uh, and begin collecting the pieces. You could still head over there. I'm and grabbing grab the littlest one. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh, God. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Martha's going to hop out with her with the axe and just be okay. like, oh, jeez. Uh, help either just drag the whole small one or chop a leg and run, whatever works best. Uh, okay. Karen is you bizarrely chop strong. Out. I don't think I... Seeing them hop out, Stanley is going to also follow to help. Sure. Yeah, I, this isn't a difficult thing to do. You have an axe and just one of you holds it still while the other chops. Um, I think there's enough body parts uh, occupied over there that they are uh, at least temporarily not going to come after you here uh, while they collect up the fallen bodies of some of the other ones that are in the area um so then uh as you uh, retrieve this leg there is a mess of pillows that falls down uh on and around cletus as uh the entirety of the pillow pilferers uh that were up on top of the shelves uh land onto these pillows and uh are completely safe from their fall Ah, uh, was the clown under there? I think he was. God darn it, get off of me! He's, he's fine. All right. Um, Stanley pulls out a Stanley blade and stands. Apologies, our saviors. You have rescued us from this dire situation. Yeah, you it looks are the like... ones the prophecy has foretold. Prophecy. Did your prophecy also foretell of trying to kill me about three hours ago? Not even. Did your prophecy also talk about meatballs? I, uh, Does your prophecy talk about uh, whoever is in charge of, <sighs> of this situation? If you would just wait for one second, we could maybe tell you the prophecy. Huh, I don't have one second. Could you make it a little bit shorter? Four saviors will emerge on the night of the end of the canopy. The last of their members will answer a call to destiny. The wasp the archivist and the clown shall join the last of the canopy, and they shall sail the Argo through our halls and unite the tribes to face a common threat. Each shall find what they desire and deserve. They shall bring an end to the invasion and be our reapers. Or, they shall bring an end to the invasion or be our reapers, spiriting us away to the land beyond the parking lot. Sorry, it's a long prophecy. I, I messed up the last part. That one's on me. Was that quick enough, though? How long did it take you to tattoo that on your arm? A very long time. It was extremely painful. We don't have great stuff for tattoos here. Yeah, evidently. 
All right, but my question is, which of you three is the clown? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Haha, -ha, I got that one. We <laughs> usually only do pillow jokes. So did the down of the softest pillow tell you this, or...? How... Yes, actually. Yeah. How'd you... Are you one of us in disguise this whole time? We were sort of salty about the fact that the canopy was supposed to be our saviors. I mean, I'll be honest, I, I, th I thought that joke would land a little better. I guess, it, I guess it's a canopy thing. Listen, there's a whole lot of talk of prophecy and saviors and land beyond the parking lot, but I'm not going nowhere until I find what I came for. Well, the prophecy does foretell that each of you will find what you desire and deserve. All right. Uh... What does it say that we have to do exactly? Unite the tribes. All of them? Uh, it's not clear on that. You try, try your best, maybe? So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me that we gotta unite tribes here. Now, you, you there, tattoo boy number one, you're, you're from this canopy tribe, right? Yes, I, I am. And y'all are, in fact, I mean, y'all are, in fact, not the canopy tribe, right? No, we are their sworn enemies. Like a frickin' Looney Tune. I race around the group behind Stanley and push him at the small of his back at the lead prophecy telling pillow person and now kiss! You, you fall very gently into the pile of pillows. <laughs> now he does, kiss! Does he have a soft face? The cartoon man does have a point. We will probably have to start with the first two that we have. Which is the canopy people and the pillow people. Pillow you are our saviors. We are eternally grateful. You don't have to worry about us. So can you get over your beef with the canopy folks? Well, it, they sort of disappeared. So it's just this one. They kind of burned down my home. And I point to the direction where you can still see the canopy tribe where the Molotov cocktail went off. Your home? I mean, you also... We're tied up over there, right? It seemed like you sort of were abandoned. We didn't think you'd care that much. I mean, I don't, but it's, uh, it's, it's complicated. Martha's backing away and just, like, looking around for any sign of the, uh, <laughs> stuff that she's, uh, Intelligent life? Well, she's looking for the, uh, the sign of, you know, the stuff that she is hunting for to reclaim uh <laughs> uh you can go ahead and investigate a mystery here if you'd like all right so let's... also real quick you said that they, the employees like collect the remaining pieces are yes. they like following this bit that we just grabbed uh they are currently like collecting the bodies of some of the ones that had fallen uh there were ones okay. around the outside that had been like uh the pillow pilferers also have like lances which are just like fence stakes that they had been launching down at the employees so there's a few around too you're able to like grab this leg before they're able to do, and like chat here for a while before they try to come after you or do anything who are the gotcha. who are the who are grabbing limbs um, from the fallen squishies martha grabbed like a whole ass leg and shoved it buckled it into the uh the the car seat in the in the odyssey I, and then started yeah, looking Cletus, around. Cletus has a question. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know uh, terribly much about you humdrums, but what are you doing with that squishy's leg? Are you hungry or something? Yes. <laughs> Have you not tried um, it before? It's pretty much the same saviors, thing as tofu. Saviors, you, they will come after you if you have that leg. I thought you said you would. You hasn't stopped me before. Oh god, how many legs have you collected? Were you around anyone? Sorry, what? Wait, were you around anyone when you collected legs before? Sometimes. Okay. Usually I just cut them up into really tiny pieces and put them in my gas tank. Oh. Sometimes I do eat them, though. Okay. No judgment. You are our saviors. <laughs> as long as you <laughs> season it, it tastes just fine. So, like, when you were talking and saying stuff before, all of the uh, pillow pilferers were sort of, like, nodding their heads along with you, and there's, like, significantly fewer doing that when you're talking about, like, taking these limbs. 
Listen, in circumstances like these, one needs to learn to be resourceful, yes? <laughs> we have food. If, okay. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but is that food meatballs? No, strangely enough, all of our meatballs, uh, we ate them like a week ago, and we haven't found any more. All right, uh, this this pillow talk is all making me uncomfortable. I'm going to continue looking around now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and uh, roll to investigate this right talk. now. <laughs> um, remind me, it was 2d6 or 1d6? Okay. Yes, so 2d6 and uh, add your sharp modifier for Martha. You have... Zero. Um, Zero. Oh, my God, I rolled a 12. <laughs> hey! Oh, hey. Wow. I, okay. That's a... Really good I, I will screenshot okay, not proof if, uh, if ever needed, but like, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I believe you. Uh, okay, so you get to uh, ask three questions. To um, you as the... Or, sorry, two questions. Um, so you can ask of the list, uh, what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What is being concealed here? So uh, what is being concealed here is sort of a grab all. Um, that would probably be a good one to do. Yeah. Um, I think and I'm, then you might have another question you pick from there. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking for. I'm just trying to see if there's like a hint of something to get back on track for what I'm trying to do. Sure. So the the first one you mentioned, yeah. Um, yeah, so you're a very observant individual and you begin to look around. Uh, as you do, you... Uh, start listening a bit closer and you hear the light hum of what sounds like a drone somewhere Mm. you begin to look around and you like peek your head around one of the shelves and you see a drone that has been watching this situation uh that now uh as you look at it begins to fly off oh my god no get back here get back here you little bastard okay she's like sprinting trying to get (laughs) okay uh it's in the air and flying upward so is there a shelf nearby? Uh, I don't <laughs> I'll climb. You have a firearm, correct? I do. Um wait. Is okay, when you say drone, are we talking like a quad like uh situation? Um it's a larger quad copter type thing. <sighs> it looks hmm. uh in- it's incredibly similar to uh an SCP Foundation standard uh mtf type drone okay i am going to i was thinking about throwing my axe but i would not want to lose that i mean is it like right above me where i'm not gonna um it's like 20 feet in the air okay probably. but if i like chuck my axe at it you it, would be shooting okay, upward. cool if i miss it's gonna come down or, near me or you would be it's able not to... gonna it's not like at an uh angle no or... uh it, it's away okay. from you a bit so it's like uh it would be 20 feet away 20 feet up yeah, okay. You would probably hit a shelf if you miss. <sighs> submachine gun instead. Okay, you pull the sh- submachine gun off of your hip that you- no one has questioned up until now. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll to kick some ass. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, that is an eight total. Eight total. Okay, Um. so what's supposed to happen there is you deal some damage to it and it deals some damage to you. How much damage does your submachine gun deal? Uh, it says let's see three harm three harm okay i think with that um you clip one of the uh quad arms yeah yeah rotors which is that yeah that's probably what i would have been aiming for so that makes sense and uh it begins to spin out of control uh it is able to uh return fire at you uh as it's falling to the ground good. good um you take Two harm, which is reduced to one from the armor that you have, correct? Uh, I believe so. I'm, where was the armor on the, the list again? That was the one thing I couldn't remember where it's at. Um, yeah, you have one armor. Uh, it's one of the moves that you took, uh, Battlefield Awareness. You always know what's ha- happening around you and what to watch out for. Take plus one armor. Okay. So, sorry. Okay, yeah, so we can continue. So if You're I have good. one armor, I took two harm, but I only, so I only take one. Yeah, so uh, the drone falls to the ground some distance away from you. You can uh, go over to it and see if it's still intact or if you can right. retrieve it. Yeah. And uh, everyone else around you uh, heard this as it <laughs> fell to the ground. Uh, it, also, as you shot a submachine yeah. gun. <laughs> it, is, it does say it is very loud. Um, 
and I don't know mm-hmm. where it shot me. I assume it clipped my shoulder or my arm or something. So I'm just gonna. She yeah, just yeah. goes for it. She doesn't really seem faced. So, uh, as as Martha fires, Stanley yells out, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> and ducks behind as he has not heard something that loud in a long time. Oh come on! The shooting gallery is way more dangerous than that. What is that exactly? Our saviors have brought wonderful weapons. We picked the right crowd to follow. <laughs> uh, Please don't shoot us. I'm not sure how far ahead I am, but she pro- Martha probably didn't hear or respond to any of this. She's just beelining for the drone. Yeah. So uh, you get over to it, and um, you don't see a foundation logo on it, but you do notice a significant coat of paint where you would normally find a foundation logo. Okay. It has uh, deactivated at this point. I don't know if you have any way to uh, see if it has a signal coming from a particular direction. I don't know. I I mean, like, I know under the weird thing it says, like, to roll to use magic tech or anomalous things. So uh, could I mm. make a roll or something to try and access it or Sure. I think you're probably familiar with this technology, so I think that makes sense. Go ahead and roll plus weird. Roll to hack into the mainframe. (laughs) Ah, that's also an eight. Okay, mixed success. Um, With that, I'll say that you uh, start to look at it, you crack it open, uh, you think that you can probably uh, get access to either a backlog of where it was getting its signal from, or repurpose it for your uses um but it will take a significant amount of time to do you're not able to do it all right fly here i'm uh i see what you did that's because it's not flying all right i'm gonna heft it onto my shoulder and uh (laughs) hoof it back to the odyssey cool i think you can uh fit that in the honda odyssey no problem would you care to explain not not particularly okay can you explain at least what the weapon is you just used uh yeah it's uh it's and how you have it Ah, it shoots bullets. We have heard I, I, of this fabled weapon. All hail the gun! Okay, no, this is, uh, all this is hail a very, the it's, gun! Oh, oh my god. Excuse, uh, excuse me, how long have you guys been in here? Uh, I mean, a long time. I, I haven't seen a car, or I've, I know what a, a gun is, but like, that's... Were you I, born that, in here? We only know of no. the pillows and now of the gun. Th- oh, there's a, listen, the there's a lot more to life than uh, pillows and guns, so you might want to broaden those horizons a little bit, but... We shall broaden our horizons. Are you from the outside world? Horizons. Oh, wait, no, you're new. You're I've new. Right, right, right. So, I, I, do, I do, does the outside world still use CD players? No, Sometimes. Really, no. I... Okay. I, I, is Cartoon Network still good? I would say no, but I don't think any children's TV is good. <laughs> it's what? What about four kids? We don't. No, especially not that one. Four kids <laughs> was um <clears throat> the the higher powers. Uh, it, uh, I really liked it. what they did with One Piece and Dragon Ball. Oh, God. It was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> oh, my kids aren't allowed to watch those. They're too violent. Lovely. Okay, I'm strapping the. Says Karen as she slings her leg on her shoulder. I'm I'm shoving the drone in the car now. Don't worry about it. Uh... So about that, I would like an explanation. Seeing as, as we are working together now as a unit, as a family. So tell us what it is. It's a drone. <laughs> you hear the distant roar of an engine. Um, an engine. All right. An so, engine. how many? Uh, how many of you would? Uh, is this something a sound that Stanley would recognize? Uh, you probably would, being a denizen of uh, the infinite IKEA, and the pillow pilferers also would. You are aware of a particular tribe within the infinite IKEA known as the Shrieking Bandits. Uh, they are essentially the Mad Max of the infinite IKEA. They have somehow managed to build uh, vehicles from the different appliances and etc. that's within the Infinite Ikea, uh, as well as creating a massive, uh, probably about like 
mile and a half to two mile radius uh, racetrack that is not incredibly far away from uh, the Canopy and Pillow Pilfer tribe. You would semi-regularly hear the roar of engines coming from there. Now, but they're sounding like they're getting closer. It, uh, you maybe heard it once off in the distance a while earlier, but didn't know what it was. It does sound like the same sound you heard, but getting closer. And as a foundation employee, Martha would know of them, or was she not monitoring those specifics? Yes. So Martha has been monitoring the infinite Ikea for quite okay. a while. There haven't been too many drone adventures into here, but uh, the different tribes are at least known okay. to the foundation, if not uh, well documented. All right. Uh, well, are we uh, just going to sit here while we wait for Fast and the Furious to show up? Or I can't fit everyone in my car. I am happy to take you three. Well, I think we need to uh, uh, get the information we need here from the pillows and get out. Okay. What, uh, what for the information are you looking for exactly? What, what is the Argo? I would like to know. Sorry? They said they sail the Argo, but I don't, I don't. I don't know that term. Is that an outside thing, or...? The Argo. I would assume that there are not boats in here. I, I mean, there are so many departments that could be around here somewhere. I just don't know, but... You never know. I think we should start at the beginning, and we should find out where the other tribes are if we are going to hope to unite them. <sighs> so, do you know where we can find the other tribes? They are everywhere, including okay, that is the not helpful. race car ones that are approaching. Do they count? Okay, then we can stay here and let's talk it out like grown-ups. Oh, boy. They don't talk my much. Yeah, well, we have a gun. I, I, well, I... This is true. We shall I trust should, you I and the gun. I should clarify that we I have the, the gun, gun, specifically. You do have not... the gun. <sighs> I don't really see where my part is in this. I'm going to be real. I'm just here for... Would you be willing to defend us with your gun? With... I mean, within reason. I'm not going to just... If we know there's some murdering Mad Max looking at... Unless they actually look like Vin Diesel. I don't want to stick around to, to see that. The pillow pilferers begin setting up a wall of pillows. <laughs> How are you going to find out if they look like Vin Diesel if you aren't going to wait right, until they get okay. here? Yeah, don't patronize me. Okay, I, I shoved a disembodied slender man into your car seat. I don't know what more you want from me, okay? I've just I've got my... I'm on... I don't, I don't like... I've got a question. Uh... I've got a question. Oh, wait, it's a DM question. Mm -hmm. Does Does Martha have any foundation insignias on their outfit that would identify them to me. Does she? Um, does she? Well, I, I actually yeah. forgot to clarify if she's in, like, like, the, as I know we had, like, equipment and stuff, but, like, as far as her body armor, like, how obvious is that stuff? Uh, I think it would be, like, a bulletproof vest beneath your clothes. Okay. It could have been on top. I don't, uh, how would you have prepared whenever your boss has told you that uh, you needed to go to, like, the entrance to, like, send in a drone or something? Would you have, like, casually thrown it off on on top of the rest of your clothing or just have it uh, or, or go the full mile and, like, put on an outfit um, for it? I imagine she probably would prefer practical clothes for that, so it might look a bit more on the tactical side, I guess, just because that's what she would prefer, I think. I don't know. Um, okay. No, I, I maybe like sense. a like a jacket or something over top that adds to the kind of more bookish appearance, but like underneath, yeah, probably. So, and my this is just my guess, but if you are foundation staff and you know you're going to the front of the IKEA, so you're wearing body armor to protect yourself, and you're not afraid of outing yourself because you're within a foundation contained site, probably mm -hmm. what you're wearing has some foundation insignias on it, like a jacket sleeve. Or on the chest of the armor or something like that. I'm guessing that. Yeah. I, I think it would make sense, but it's up to you, Martha. I, I think there's, yeah, there's probably something. It's not super visible, but if, like, you're looking for it, then I think, yeah, definitely. 
it could be it could have been that like it's on your shoulder and like you had just moved your hair and yeah, Cletus yeah. finally saw it. I was about to say, should I roll nah, to look for nah. it or should I just assume that I see it? it nah. I, th- I think it's visible. So. Oh, oh, you're one of them. You're one of them SCP. You're one of the I, SCPs. I, I, I'm I'm not an SCP, uh, sir. It's yeah, but you're one of their um, containers. Uh. <sighs> You know, uh, I, uh, is that uh, I, yes? You know, I thought I was prepared for coming in here, but this is uh, there's been a lot of weird conversations going on ever since. So I'm just not, yes, yeah, I am one of the. Well, how did you get in here? Who, who? I came for the meatballs. My problem is I don't have a way out right, right now. Do you have a way out? No, I, I regret asking. Okay, um. I, listen, I just need to take a look at this drone. She's focused on that and either shoving it into the car or if it's already shoved in the car, trying to tinker around with it some more while everyone else mm-hmm. is just like <laughs> milling about. So Sure. So uh, you are able to get it into the car, no issue, and you're tinkering around with it with like the, the mm-hmm. trunk door or the side door opened. Uh, and now the roaring of an engine is very loud. It knocks down the... Uh, pretty low pillow fort that the pillow pilferers had been able to quickly put up uh and as they do there is uh someone who hops out of the car and stands on top of it uh the vehicle looks like um like a repurposed bed frame that has had wheels added to it there's been uh, like some 12 volt batteries strapped onto it and um it looks like it has the motors of like some AC units and the blades from the AC units are also fashioned to like the back side of it. Uh, it's very Mad Max, Mad Max esque, uh, with a <laughs> Ikea twist. Uh, someone hops out of the vehicle and stands on top of it and, uh, is about to say something when they see your car. <sighs> I'm going to climb on top of my van and, sling my harpoon gun over my shoulder <laughs> and then I'm going to wave at them. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name's Karen. This is going to be good. And you are? It's so beautiful. I know. Isn't it lovely? Anyway, uh, we? How did you craft this? Magic. And it stops working if any of me or my associates are dead, so you better not kill us or it'll turn into dust. You will enter the race. What what now? Oh. If I enter the race... You must. Can we talk diplomacy? Of course. If you win. No, just if I enter. I'm gonna, uh... No, if you win. I want to roll to manipulate someone. Uh, at this point, the... From the top of the shelves that are surrounding you, uh, you see many different individuals standing there uh with various rocks or appliances like someone's got a toaster mm-hmm. someone has a kitchen aid and that thing's heavy <laughs> they're all raised up and ready to throw down on you uh, i should have assumed there'd be more of them. martha's gonna straighten up okay so so are you the one who's in charge you will race if you win you make decisions if you lose we get your ship. Our ship. Okay, so how about if I just leave? What happens then? Try. Martha. Okay, um, I would really like to speak not- to whoever is in charge of you. Martha straightens up, pulls out the gun. <laughs> I want to roll to manipulate someone. <laughs> uh, you can. Can I give ahead. a boost I- if I am helping? In, a- in this situation, I don't know if you're gonna. You may be able to like help your situation a little bit but you're not going to be able to like completely uh get away from this situation without uh something significant but who's (laughs) this man's manager (laughs) i want to speak to the manager um (laughs) how about how about this can i give a boost to that or uh if she needs it then you can uh give it if if you want to help out to knock her up a, a roll, but uh, go ahead and roll to manipulate someone. 
Okay, so I Oof. I want to I'm trying to think of what I what I want from this situation. Um mm -hmm. I Oh, I don't actually know. Cuz I think I want them to I mean, I want them to not take my car. Yeah. Right, right. Maybe um, can well the thing you said earlier of just like them being willing to talk diplomacy whether or not we win or something. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to Yeah. yeah. It, I'll say it, like you I could potentially get like uh whether or not you win the complete race they may be more willing to work with you yeah i want to like i want to convince somebody to let me talk to whoever is their king like whether or okay. not if that's if that's your goal i think that's achievable go ahead okay fucking four. Oh shit <laughs> Uh, did you add? Did yes, you add I your had charm? My Remind modifier. me what the cutoff oh. is for like the different levels. Uh, so it's one or six or lower is a fail. Uh, seven mm. to nine is a mixed success, and a ten plus. Dice jail um, for you. So yeah, if you had gotten a five, then you could have had Cletus help you because he could do plus two. I, yeah, I don't think anyone else has I'm that not, move or something like it. I mean, I, yeah, I roll to help out with the cool, mm -hmm. but I don't know how that. Uh, that would only do a plus one or everybody something. beg yeah. yeah so you can only bump it up plus one even if everyone like mm -hmm. stacks on it um otherwise you could just like succeed at everything um you would be able to push it up to like okay. the next tier All right. i'll take i'll take the l none of you are in, Kit, in range to do that can i step in yep. and do it I, if anyone else wants to do anything obviously please jump in i i know i have a thing called soothe though with interactions and i don't remember exactly how uh, what does that do when you talk to someone for a few seconds in a quiet voice you can calm them down blocking any panic anger or other negative emotions they have uh so I, I don't know if that would okay help the situation or not it's up um, to you but it it might so with the failure that karen just had um i was imagining a fairly aggressive response to this situation if you want to try to soothe it so that um, you're still going to be along for the ride, but they won't yeah. take anger out on you, okay. go ahead and try. Or is it uh, you just um, do? I, th I think you just do. Oh, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just, uh, yeah, just, right. so just say. So Martha's going to straighten up from where she was been tinkering with the drone and uh, everyone, you know, just getting more and more cacophonous around her and like everyone's about to like throw rocks. Yeah, uh, the guy who's the guy who's on top of the car like r begins to raise his hand to like signal for people to throw right, something. So, so she's gonna whip go out her gun and s fire a single shot into the ceiling. Uh, everyone who is like a, a tribes person like flinches and like yeah. ducks down for a second. All right, I think we can all just take a second to calm down here. You know, we can talk this out like reasonable adults. Clunk. Uh, someone dropped their toaster. Thank you. It fell for a, a while. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, did I shoot what, somebody? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 um, now, why don't we just stop? Uh... There was someone still up in the canopy, but not anymore. <laughs> I th I, yeah. <laughs> there, there actually are rafter rats. That's another tribe that's... <laughs> you, you could have hit someone up there. <laughs> No, so someone much dropped for their I'm sorry the for tribe. derailing. Go ahead. Now, why don't we try this again? Just, uh, uh. <clears throat> and now she's suddenly like a little bit nervous with like literally everybody <laughs> looking at her. She's like, <clears throat> I mean, uh, there's no need for hostility. That's all I'm saying, you know? It's fine. She's putting her gun away. We can make this a pleasant experience. Just like, he raced in 2008, right? Right. We freaking love that movie, <laughs> but you must enter the okay, race. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. I'll do your race. <sighs> Perfect. So is it here so where- So then uh, the people begin to drop down from the shelves in like merriment uh, of like excitement that a new vehicle is entering the race uh, goes on and they surround your vehicle and sort of like- <laughs> push you into it they, they shove the pillow pilfers away uh and begin directing you off towards the racetrack you're you're along for the ride do any of them touch the car they might like occasionally bump into it as they are being merry 
Okay. If anyone touches it intentionally, I'm making a mental note of who it is. <laughs> okay. Don't you touch me! There I'll are several milk people you. who touch it. You take a mental note of every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> you you dust for you, you dust for. Uh, I'm dusting for prints on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use my top ability to protect someone, but instead protect yeah, car? Yeah, you can. You can like walk alongside it uh, as the like parade of people is bringing you to the racetrack, and like keep pe people back as like a bodyguard for the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Security if detail. I'm if I'm clear on what's going on right now, we have been we have currently been shoved into the vehicle, and we are mm -hmm. being like essentially a parade of vehicles to the racetrack right now, right? Uh, so there's a parade of, like, people. There's only the two vehicles, like, the, uh, bed frame modified one that is, like, driving ahead of you, and then a bunch of people who have surrounded the car and are leading you off in this direction. All right, so we're, like, at a walking pace, like, walking toward, we're at a walking pace driving towards the racetrack, right? Uh, yeah. Like a, a light jog, maybe. May I attempt to manipulate one of the underlings? Who is walking along the track? Or first, I just like to converse with them first, <laughs> maybe manipulate them later. Okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. I want to lean out the window, Bugs Bunny style. <laughs> hey, uh, hey there, I got a couple questions for you. Uh, you lean out. There's like a, a younger girl that's standing there, like maybe in her teens, like 14 or 15 or something. She smiles up at you and she's like, hello, you're entering the race. That's what I've been told. Now, can you tell me a little bit about this race? Yeah, so there's like uh, 10 cars, including yours now, and you're going to race. And if you win, you become the champ. And if you lose, then um, it sounded like the racer earlier said you're going to lose your car. So we get it. It looks really cool. I want to ride. Now, tell me something. Uh, what does being the champ entail? Oh, um. You're sort of like the head honcho there. You uh, get to call some of the shots. I mean, that's how we work. So that, that Baluka over there, that Baluka, he's the current champ? Oh, no. He's not the champ. He's only like uh, third or fifth place or something. Interesting, interesting. All right. Are there any other cars, or most of the cars in this race, like that? Uh, bed frame special up there? Or are there any different cars in the race that's more similar to ours? That's funny you mention it. There's actually one exactly like his that's just a bunk bed frame instead of a, a regular frame. They are big rivals with each other. I'm pretty sure they're actually brothers, but, um... Brothers? No, there's one that's, like, kind of similar to yours, but, like, smaller. It's really fast. That's, that's the champ's. Do you, does the champ call that car or anything? Does it have a name? Um, I don't know if I should give you all this information. Roll to manipulate someone if you want to learn more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, I've got a seven plus my two charm. So, I got a nine on that one. Okay. If someone wants to uh, help out with this at all, I'll like also lean out the window and try to convince this person you can get bumped up to a complete success uh would it be just saying i would like to assist or is it i also uh you have down? to roll to help someone out which is plus cool uh, uh i could help but my cool is a zero i think I like everyone wants. has negative yeah. one uh, or zero uh, on cool yeah we're like the uncool squad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm literally a clown martha's she's got she, yeah, has she's got some cool. So she'll just like cool. lean forward and be like, "I, I, I'm really not. Us. I, I'm just here. I don't know what's going. Why, why are you talking to this child exactly? Like, are you, are you good? Is, is she fine? What's going on? This, this child here, this wonderful, loving child, this kind-hearted soul, has information that may help us win." Or otherwise, this right. Oh, that's so kind of you. That's really sweet. Uh, you did That's, yeah, but we don't. I just really like the races. I haven't raced since, like, Mario Kart back in middle school. So, uh, yeah, it's, you know, really nice of you to be helping us out. What else can you tell us about it? I've heard of Mario, Mario Kart. Uh. What's that like? Rage-inducing. 
Are you? Do you have? Vid- <gasps> That's the best kind of racist. Okay, I'll <laughs> tell you whatever you want. Great. I, uh, I don't remember what question the uh, the clown was so, asking. So, like, you go ahead, Sherm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So you were re- rolling to manipulate someone. You got a complete success. Um. And so on this question, I wanted to ask. What kind of car are we getting in a race in against? What is our main adversary? Um, What's the champ's car? What what do they name that car? Oh, well, it's called the Victory Machine, of course. All right, but does it say anything on the side? Are there any words written on it? Um, there's a funny circle thing that's underneath it, but it's, like, painted over? It says Victory Machine on the side, but you can kind of see that there used to be something else on there. The clown specifically realizes that he's asking all of these questions, <laughs> and he knows nothing about cars. So... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because, the Foundation employee uh, could help out with that a little. Because that's how sharp my Zero Sharp I, clown is. I also have Zero Sharp, so I feel like <laughs> you have to describe the logo, and I have to see if I, Tosh, IRL, remember which logo it corresponds. <laughs> Too. <laughs> like... um, the little girl has not seen the logo in too much detail. She just knows it's like circular. Um, so wouldn't be able to help What's you out much there? more with that. Uh... Um, but she describes the car to you and to just save you some time. Uh... Uh, you gather that it's like sort of like close to a large ATV, somewhere between like a, a truck and an ATV t- size type vehicle. And there's supposed to be some sort of weapon that has been strapped to the top rack of the car. If Stanley could possibly interject, I would like to try to figure out if if this is something where this race is going to be, should should we be more worried about how (laughs) fast this vehicle is or about how deadly this vehicle is? Well, I've I've still got one more trick up my, uh, you know, long weird sleeves like arm and t- extrusion here or your many many pockets or my many many pockets i have one more question for this child who is a fan of mario kart or <laughs> rage inducing races yes all right so let me let me lead into this so wait a minute uh what's your name darling <sighs> why do you ma- <laughs> i should have like grabbed a list of names <laughs> Because oh, I am also a DM, and I knew oh, that it would drive you nuts. Gosh, did, you, of course Wait, you would do this to me. Is she from? Um, she's from the Mad Max betrayal, tribe. right? <laughs> but that's what I'm calling them. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, among a lot of the other tribes in the Infinite IKEA, it is common practice to name after a like appliance. But I don't know if the um, shrieking bandits would follow this convention. Maybe they would for, um, I, I sort of had imagined they're probably in like an automotive, uh, dual, like home appliance type section where there's like a lot of different motors and the things that they're able to scalp from. So if they wanted to follow, uh, if they did follow that convention, maybe she would be like, it's like an off, uh, I guess it would be Ikea brand. Do they have any like auto vacuum type things. I just want to call her Batterina. <laughs> well, listen here. While we don't, while you're thinking of the name, we'll come back to that. I'm just going to call her Darlin for now anyway. Uh, hold now tell me, Darlin. Here, I, I got hold something. Uh, we'll go with uh, Fracta. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, it's after a set of load-bearing straps. That seems appropriate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good. She's got a, a strong name. My name's, my name's Fracta. Fracta. You, uh, you love the races, right? And you yeah, really love when everything. the competition's real strong and they're rage-inducing and they're throwing a fit because they're so excited, right? Yeah, some of the other cars are not that great, so I like it whenever they're able to put well, up a fight. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I've got a feeling, based on the car you've told me about, that the champ's in a little bit of trouble. Oh. Really? Yeah, you see, this beast right here, thunk, thunk, this creature is a monster at driving. It is incredible. You should have seen the way that we completely flattened a bunch of them Ikea squishies a while ago. And so, 
I don't want this race to be boring. I'd feel so terrible if it wasn't entertaining for the public. But if you're willing to help me out, I've got something that we can fix that with. Oh, God. Now it's time for my second manipulation okay. role. Martha makes eye contact. Um, go ahead and tell me, tell me what you're trying to do, and I'll figure out if I even want you to roll for it or not. If it might be good enough to fit into the last manipulate someone, you've you've pretty well uh, grabbed. My her plan attention. is essentially to sugar the champ's engine <laughs> so the car doesn't work. <laughs> I want her to sugar the champ's engine so that it is not a problem anymore. Uh, I'll tell you, you won't be able to convince her of this. She is. Uh, she loves the races and uh, is an honest uh, fan of the races. But she doesn't know. But, but what she if doesn't he rolls know a 12? I'm not. I'm telling her it's going to make the champ's cars better. <laughs> I'm lying to her. I am, in fact, manipulating her. Uh, I'll tell you that she would be willing to help you do better, but she wouldn't be willing to uh, <laughs> How old? help you sabotage someone else. Is she How smart old? enough to How know the is difference she again? is my question. About 14. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. Oh, she would know. Yeah. Okay, we're a little older than I thought. Got it. So Cletus is willing to manipulate a child. <sighs> Got it. The, the oh, whole time yeah. this conversation is yes. going on, Martha just like looks over at Stanley and makes eye contact like... Uh, oh, you hush. I'm a huckston money from these children all day, every day. And that, that's that's it. Like, she's really just making, like, a, like, she's just, it's just the whole time that this is happening, it's she's just, just looking okay. over at Stanley with, like, this kind of perplexed and concerned expression. Like, mm. It's been a very confusing day for Stanley as well, and he just shrugs. She shrugs in solidarity. All right. Well, if my if there's no world in which I can manipulate this child into giving the champ an engine additive that will speed up his car so that it's a fair race, <laughs> ugh, then if you can think of anything, you, at this point you would be getting pretty close to the racetrack. If you can think of anything like right now that she could maybe do for you to help you, uh, like improve in the race. You know, I I think they usually start the new racers towards the back. I could, I'm friends with some of the race organizers. I could talk to them and see if you can move up a few spaces. Well, that would be just lovely, darling. We want to make sure that we have a good eye on the champ and that we get to really battle it out for the real championship. It wouldn't be fair if one of us started the back. You gotta, you're a smart cookie, you are. Yeah, I I don't know it. Usually they have the new racers start at the back. I don't know if I should ask. It might Can be unfair. I now you can roll. I yeah, I'm gonna here we go. Play it, roll it, roll it nice. Oh no. I uh, oh well I, I, I got a seven, so that's at least something. I'm not gonna get to the next okay, level. Okay, mixed success. You may have to give her something in return to get this. <sighs> Can I get an autograph? You may certainly, my darling little peach. If you guys win, I want to be the first one to have one. She hands you, like, a, a little notebook that she has. Uh, Don't look at the first few pages, please. It's, it, it's private. You got it, darling. She signed the back ones. You got it, darling. I will start in the back. <laughs> Do you? I mean, in front of her, Don't yes. Don't snoop through this child's okay. diary. I, uh, this poor kid. <laughs> I am 100 going... <laughs> if you don't... <laughs> Manipulation, fine. Going into her diary, you don't think no. You T. Pillowicker is going to not go through this child's diary. You we don't... Listen, think. we don't need to know how... She's, like, <sighs> looking in the window, trying, like, this... shivering, hoping that you won't look through her diary. Listen, we don't... Uh. She doesn't need the whole world to really know about her crush on though. Gasket or whatever uh. the local mechanic boy's name is. Like, <laughs> you know, but now it's like I can't wait to kill these. Grunkula was looking so cool today. <laughs> Y'all are real honest to yourselves right now. When we have a life or death situation, and we may have intelligence in those pages. Please no. I say very under my breath, so obviously she does, does not hear me. Is it possible? 
for him mm-hmm. to speak under his breath? <laughs> is he physically capable of doing that? <laughs> I don't know if Sherm is or if, by extension, Cletus is. It's a stage whisper. <laughs> Cletus's whisper is yeah. still a shout. That has been said to me in my life before. Okay, so uh, to speed through this, uh, <laughs> she wants you all to sign it. If you do, uh, go for it. If you want to sneak a peek at the pages without her seeing, I can have you act under pressure. Ah, I am right in front of her, and I want to, I, but I feel I, like Martha I Martha is going to be giving him a glare the whole mm-hmm. time, too. The moment his thumb goes to, like, those beginning pages, she's just, like, sta- it, it, Her big old glasses <laughs> she's wearing, it's got, like, the anime glint where you're just seeing the reflection of the light off of them, <laughs> you know, in, in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Karen says, not now, sweetie, I'm driving. Y'all are a bunch of... <laughs> she, she, like, like idly, like, scribbles something. Yeah, I think we all Stanley sign. will sign the, uh, the, the diary. Beautiful. 